Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, doing BTS Euphoria. That's all I know really is BTS Euphoria, and that's by Jungkook. But it's this theme of love yourself, wonder. So that's that. I am Ellis. We are reacting to K-pop, but I'm also about to branch out again, man. Back back in the you know back a couple of minutes ago, I was doing some Indian and Punjabi, and I think we about to sprinkle that back in. In fact, uh, one of the next four videos, I think, will be that. Um, 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 what's going on? One, I can officially call myself a fan of BTS now, having heard probably around 20, 30 tracks. And really, I mean, that thing that's between a fan and just liking them. In the beginning, there was like two or three songs that I had heard and I thought were really good. Uh, so I think part of becoming a fan is chasing more of the music, right? And then having more music resonate with you. We were like, oh, bro, I'm liking like three out of four songs, seven out of eight songs. So um, I'm doing the, dude, I'm saying um too much. Bad Ellis. Going after some of the solo stuff because I think it's kind of easy to go ahead and knock some of that out. I picked this one with Jungkook from, uh, there was a collaboration he did way back and I did not know he was from BTS and I did a reaction to it. It's like, you don't love me like you used to do. Um, I did I did that video probably back in November or something, and I remember liking it a lot. So let's give the man some love. Let's see what's up. I remember him taking his monitor out of his ear because like the something was wrong with the sound. Got to do with this. And this isn't too old, right? Oh, that says April, right? Four four. Never mind. Maybe it's older. Whatever. Let's roll. I'm supposed to know about the storyline, right? Because I recognize some of these clips from the other solo stuff, right? Oh, yeah! Was it Stigma? I know that piano part. This is one of those moments I don't like being out of the loop. The, the imagery and the uh, piano is so powerful. It's like, maybe I'm glad, maybe I, I'm glad I don't know the story. Maybe I'd be like crying. It's not like, it's, it's, it's nice to feel emotions, but I'm not sure that crying is like the most effective way to be on camera.
I do love those rolled arpeggios on the uh, piano. I would normally not say that out loud. I guess like when you're on camera, you're supposed to say that stuff. Euphoria. One, I'm so happy that it took this direction, which makes sense with Euphoria. Um, and I'm laughing at myself because when I absolutely love the track, I reach for my pen and I realized I have no idea what to write. I guess I'm just going to go for the generic heart. This is old school, man. We write in hearts with a pen next to the songs. Oh, what a good build up. All that tension released into the music. planning of having the varieties of colors um one i just think it looks really cool but two i'm always shocked that i feel like there's more variety and this isn't just bts this is really any k-pop group that does this type of thing i feel like they have more variety of color than i have in my closet which is like sad i should at least have that much variety in general let alone the ability to have five of my coolest friends get together and pose See, now the trick this is where I have to, I'm going to take a risk and I'm either going to come off like really dumb or kind of smart. One thing I like about the soloist videos is that it gives me a chance to just listen to them and stare at them and get, you know, get a chance to like a uh, Taeyeon, right? Taeyeon, the one you call V. Um, I now know him only because of his uh, video, which was singularity, I believe. Um, and now when he sings, I'm like, oh, that's him. Uh, and with Jungkook, I always wonder if it's like Jungkook or Jungkook. I should have found the Hangul. Anyways, um, if he's the guy we're looking at right now with the yellow jacket, I would like to think that he's like the sunshine. Because we have some other reds in the picture. We have some other blues in the picture. I mean, we had them all together. But this brother right here is the only one who's wearing the yellow. And he's like, there's only one sun in the sky. So like he's the the sun, right? And all the blues are like a sky. That could be a thing, right? See, so look at all this, look at all this. They, well, huh? hmm? Ain't no yellow. I guess you'd call it kind of an orange, but there's no yellow. Look at all the blues and whites, like blues and whites like the sky. And then in the yellow is the sun. <laughs>
Uh, I was waiting for the courts to happen again. Um, we had a very typical type of chord structure. What would you call it? Flat six to flat seven to one. So like in other words, it could, if you were in the key of E, it would be from like C to D to E, right? Because normally you'd have a C sharp and a D sharp in the key of E major. But it's in minor. It's actually resolving to a minor. So it went like C, D to E minor, which is kind of crazy because it's euphoria and we have this open scenery, but we have like a resolution on a minor chord. We can go back to hear that, right? Why not? Oh, well, that's, sorry, it's the final chord. There it is, the flat six, flat seven, and our minor one chord. So I guess if we're in minor, we don't have to call it flat six, flat one, but it kind of, usually you, in rock music, you'd hear it go into a major one often. I'm pretty sure that was minor. Maybe I'm just wrong about everything today. Also, case in point, n none of me and my friends, or maybe just me, but I swear none of us have had that much variety in color in our wardrobes out in public, which is something we need to fix now that we know there's something out there. Definitely my pals and I, my guys and I, have never had that much white on. Hmm. It's like there's a whole other side to life you're missing out on. Like, oh, I haven't done that. I haven't been with like five buddies looking out at the water dressed in all white. Possibly a theme of redemption? Forgivingness, openness, using the white colors against the sea? Forgiving oneself, maybe? That piano piece is so famous. I just don't remember what it is. Is it like Debussy or something? I feel like it could be a Debussy piece, but whatever. You know what? I'm gonna. Oh. Um, I know y'all get mad when I stop stuff, but I think I'm gonna stop it though. I mean, that's already awesome. We have so much we can already talk, which we're not gonna talk forever. We, I talked enough in the middle of the uh, thing. One, I'm gonna go out on Debussy. I mean, I'm gonna say that I think that's Debussy, but I'm pretty notoriously bad on my uh, modern um, piano music, which I guess you call it impressionistic or whatever, which I think they hated that term. Anyhow, impression music giving you the, um, well, when it comes to painting, I think impressionism was having a, a blurry, like a not clear image giving you the impression of what other artists would have been doing before that. So before artists were very clear and clearly giving you a, a picture. And then I believe, I believe my painting history is not so good. Uh, I think with painting, they kind of distorted the image a little bit to give you an overall impression. So you had like the pointillism, like dots, you know, thing. Is that Monet? I'm not sure. Uh, in music though, impressionism is, dude, I feel like so scared to be talking about this stuff without, I haven't consulted a book in years on this. So it's like, I could be really bastardizing this. Um, 
as opposed to having, which whether or not that is Debussy we're listening to, I think it applies to the music that we're hearing. I do think it's Debussy though. But um, that instead of having a general melody and development as would be typical of music of the classical and Baroque era where we have really definite uh, melodic structures and then those structures develop over time. They get ornated, um, ornamented and you have de developmental sections like maybe in like a sonata form or something like that. And then we have like a, a really nice organized way of how it's laid out, you know, idea one, two, three, and then maybe we get developments on one and two or two and three, and it all gets, we change some keys, then we come back and wrap it all up. Um, with impressionistic music, in my opinion, we get more of a soundscape. There are still things you could call melodies. There are still sections you can call one, two, and three and still have like an organized structure to it. But it's more like, I think what you see visually, like when you, when you look out over like wilderness, you know, or a seascape or a pond, um, you have like the looking from left to right. Like I'm just looking across and taking in whatever I see. It could be a foggy day. It could be birds or fish or whatever, right? And my eye is making a journey and my mind is making a journey as I look. And way out, I can't see everything. And up close, I see stuff, but it all goes together. The fine details that are near me, the stuff far away I can't make out. And I feel like in music, impressionism is giving you the impression of, to me, I see landscapes. Like, like, like there, when you put it with the water, you're like, absolutely, this music goes with water. But there is a beginning and end. But the beginning and end is kind of just a formality because music has to have a beginning and end because you have to hit start at some point and hit stop at some point. But really, almost at any, there's so many points in the middle of the piece, you could have just stopped it and said, this is the end, and it would have made sense. It doesn't require completion. It just is um, an adventure? No, that's not the word I'm looking for. It's just a unfolding of time and space. And just like at some point I'm going to hit stop on this thing, but my world keeps going outside of that, uh, it feels like the music is just constantly rolling forward. I feel like I'm stammering over myself. You can look up a better explanation for it. Anyways, I thought this was amazing. I thought it was, it was just uh, it was exceptional. Really cool. Really cool. I've talked enough now. No, no one's here anymore. Those of you that are here, I'm, I'm sorry it took so long for me to get to the point. I don't think I got to the point. Excellent job. I I'm going to shut up and go because this has been like 20 minutes. Bye. Be excellent.